Hey Masters of Speed, it's Terra Master with Drake and today we're gonna give you what you've all asked for. Not all, but some people have asked for this. Legitimately come into the Discord and be like, hey, what are the staples in speed duels? So today we're gonna give you a top 10 staples list. Are you ready, Drake? Oh, I'm ready. All right. Number 10. So... Coming in at number 10, as you just heard, we've got Dust Tornado. That's right, Back Row Hay in trap form comes in at number 10, barely making the cut. However, um, the thought process here is it is very good Back Row Hay. It is free Back Row Hay. It doesn't have a cost, unlike some other Back Row Hay we'll talk about later. Um, but it's slow. So, aggro deck typically don't prefer back row hate like this, which is slow. So, therefore, that limits its use. However, uh, we've seen control decks in speed duels use this quite a bit. So, it is good enough to make the list. Yeah, uh, this card can still hit a blaze accelerator. Yeah. Uh, this card can still hit a field spell. Um, like you said, it a little slow you have to set it first but certain decks don't mind that as much if you're playing the um trap monsters deck you like this card because you can use its setting from hand ability when you activate dust you can set a card from your hand keep you handless uh or something like joey likes this card because uh negating one back row and popping the second can be very good yep that about covers dust tornado i think let's move on to Number nine. Number nine. All right. At number nine, we have Nightmare Wheel. Uh, this card is obviously very good. Uh, just blocking something out from attacking or changing battle position can be very powerful. Uh, the reason it is not higher on the list is because against something like Cyber Angels, it's not super effective. Uh, or against something like Twisted Personality, you don't want to be adding counters to their skill card. But against something like Joey or another beatdown style deck, this is a great option. Yeah. Um, and then for Nightmare Wheel, I think that another reason why it's not even given a consideration to go any higher on this list is because it's on limit one. So it's, it's the matter of what it's competing with. And I think Nightmare Wheel is going to be chosen less than at least one other card on that limit one list. So, it's pretty low on the list here. Now, obviously things would be different with a different limited list, but we, we're kind of going with the current format, right? So, January 2023 is when this is being recorded. So, that's kind of what we're basing this off of. Yeah. Yep. All right, we are ready for the next card. Number eight. We have a Shrink coming in at number eight. Shrink is... I think like the definition of a solid card. It's it's good. It has a variety of uses, but it's not like it's not like a a card that can turn the game around on its own necessarily. It requires you to use it in the correct situation in order for it to be like actually have that much of an effect on the game, right? Like there's cards in this list later on that like just playing the card and you don't even have to worry about timing it all that well and turn around like a, a bad game a game that's going bad for you and but shrink i think um you can find uses for it that are like yeah you know that was good i i won a battle i wouldn't have ordinarily at one that's fine but there's also times when shrink can be like really good where you know you have your banisher and you need to protect it and protecting your banisher has turned off all their like all their crystal beast cards for example right and if you protect your banisher from dying now all of a sudden oh that was their only way to try to out your banisher and now you can just win the game so combined with the right card shrink can be really good which is why it makes the list but it isn't higher because it doesn't do too much by itself yeah, so one, what I really like about Shrink is that the matchups it's good against, it's very good against. Um, like you said, protecting your Banisher, or if you're not playing it in a Banisher deck, 
um, protecting your crystal beast or anything like that, that's good. Uh, especially if you're playing against uh, a beatdown style deck like Joey or Crystal Beast or maybe Roids. But the, what I really like about this card is the matchups where it's bad, it's not a blank. It's not terrible. Against a deck like uh, Cyber Angels, this isn't the best card, but it's not a blank when you draw it like drawing something like Dust Tornado would be. Where you draw a Shrink, you can at least damage step it. They can't use Azana's effect. You're still keeping your monster alive, hopefully. Not useless. So yeah, I like a card with a high ceiling, but the the floor isn't too terrible. Number seven. Number seven, we've got Floodgate Trap Hole. Uh, this card is actually a fantastic answer to Azana and pretty much anything else your opponent summons. If they just want to summon a Jaragumo, you can Floodgate it. Uh, yeah, just an, any monster that they summon, this can usually deal with it. They're usually going to have less defense than attack. And if not, uh, at least it's not attacking you that turn. Yeah. Um, and then the reason Floodgate's not higher is because of the 2023 limit list. Um, it's at limit three now. It's got to compete with other cards that are on limit three, which is every staple in the game. Uh, just kidding. It's like half our list, if not more than half of it. Um, so, yeah, Fl Floodgate, because it has to compete with some things that are higher on the list, to be honest, is because it, it is what causes it a lot of times to not make decks. So, um, it is obviously a card that everyone would like to have in their deck if uh, it wasn't on the limited list, which is probably why it's on the limited list. But, you know, it promotes stall as well. So that's probably another reason why it's limited list. But as far as for it being the staple goes, yeah, it's what Drake said. It it slows down your opponent's plays, right? It doesn't, it's not removal, but it slows down your opponent's plays to the point where you can either mount a counterattack or in speed duels, you can stall. It's Dr. Great. Defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right uh let's go on to the next card here number six we got cosmic cyclone coming in at number six that is right the superior back row hate why because aggressive decks because otk decks and the two best examples we have of otk decks are cyber angels and ojamas and speed duels and both of those decks prefer cosmic over dust or night beam or anything like that uh at least as far as me and you know for optimized versions of those decks so quick play spells are the best way to go because obviously for two reasons one you can go fast if you need to right and it's not just main phase fast it is for ojama's example they want to stand by phase blow up your opponent their, their, their opponent's back row um and then CAs want the option of, hey, I can either Cosmic you on my turn before I pop off, or if I'm planning to have a slow turn and kill you next turn, I might want to set my Cosmic phase down and end phase Cosmic your back row if I'm going first, right? So the, the, the flexibility of a quick play spell, I mean, it's why MST was so good in the TCG and it's why Cosmic is so good uh, here. Yeah, so it's like you said, uh, also in Cyber Angels, you can discard it uh, for your skill right. because it is a spell. That's yeah. another reason it would be better than Dust. And then in o Oja Match, like you said, um, the reason you want to play it in standby phase, uh, you want to clear the back row before you play your Oja Match, which is something you want to play in standby phase. Um, right. Another little note about this card, it does banish, not destroy, uh, which isn't super relevant, but Banishing uh, a Blaze Accelerator is better than putting it in the graveyard where they can just get it back with a rocket. Yeah, no, that's a very good that's a very good meta-relevant point specifically to hit Blaze Accelerator, yeah. Uh, back in the day, you could banish Parasite and they couldn't recycle it, but that's not relevant anymore. So, as much. Yeah, we'll ignore that one. All right, I think we're ready for to get into the top five. Number five! We've made it to the top half and it starts out with number five, Banisher of the Radiance. Uh, this card is still great. Um, it still affects multiple meta decks. Um, Crystal Beast, it, it can totally shut them down if they don't have the right hand to deal with it. They can't activate any of their Crystal Beast traps. So you put protection behind this Banisher and they might just be out of the game. But it also does hinder some other decks. Um, 
against Cyber Angels, if you get this out early enough, it can be good because it's going to say, hey, your Machine Angel rituals are being banished, so you're not going to be able to use them as protection. And also your tribute, uh, your ritual monsters that you tribute off uh, for your ritual summons, those are going to be banished as well. So you're not going to have the Izana shuffle back and destroy a card effect. So yeah, it can hinder even something like Cyber Angels, which it's not necessarily, you're not necessarily putting it in the deck to counter. But yeah, it, it's still quite effective card. Yep. And, and to go back to Oja Match, it turns off Oja Match. And without oh. Oja Match, o o the Ojama deck doesn't actually do anything because it also turns off Ojama Blue. Uh, yeah, that it's, it's an anti-meta card that makes the staple list because it's like anti-meta the entire rest of the meta so yep. no matter what you're trying to counter um if you're building a deck to counter a specific matchup or like all the specific matchups banisher is probably something you want in there number four next up we got dd warrior lady the superior banishing monster why because uh, Banisher could just get run over. You know, 1600 just gets, you know, summon Topaz Tiger, kill it. Oh, you didn't have protection. What are you going to do? Didi Warrior Lady, meanwhile, says, Oh, you attack me with something that's bigger? All right, we both get banished. Oh, you attack me with Izana? All right, we both get banished. It doesn't target, it doesn't destroy, and it's removal. That makes it probably, as Cursive would say, the best set in Speed Duel the best yeah. normal set in speed duels, right? Yeah, um, one thing I really like about this card is that uh, there's lots of cards on this list um, that will prevent Cyber Angels from going off. You know, whether that is Banisher or Floodgate, these are cards that are nice if they haven't gone off yet. Uh, DD Warrior Lady is good even if they have gone off. If you just have this set, and they're going to have to attack into it with something and lose part of their board. Or if you have enough life points, you can be aggressive with this and banish one of their monsters on your turn. Um, it's nice to have the versatility of being able to set this card as an out uh, or summon it. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's versatile. It's like you said, it's good before or after your opponent's board is built. So cool. I think we're ready to go to the third card. Number three. All right, for number three, we've got a classic. It's been a staple ever since we got it in Battle City Box, and that is Book of Moon. Book of Moon's still pretty good. Uh, it is going to be picked less as the limited three card because it has a lot to compete with. But if you do pick it, it's still quite good. Um, against a beatdown deck, it's fantastic. It's not a trap. They're not going to negate that with Joey. Uh, against... A rogue matchup, it does exactly what it does, which is uh, save you from a floodgate or uh, save your monster from getting attacked over or use it to attack over their monster on your turn. If you want to talk about versatile cards, this this is it. The Book of Moon is the most versatile card practically in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, yeah, so this isn't a card you would necessarily want against uh, Cyber Angels. Uh, that's really one of the only matchups I could think of where you wouldn't necessarily want this card. However, it combos with things uh, that can get rid of an Azana. You can Book of Moon an Azana uh, when you have no other cards in your field. They're not popping anything. And then you can summon something like a, a YZ tank and just go ahead and pop that Azana while it's face down. Her effect can't activate, the Machine Angel Ritual can't activate, and you've dealt with that problem. Yeah, so even when the matchups, when it feels like, oh, this can't be good, it targets. It's still useful if you have the right tools to go with it. So, book, I mean, it's like you said, it protects you from Floodgate, it protects you from Offerings, it protects you from Soul Exchange if you do it on Res. Book is, I think... Nightmare Wheel? Yeah, Nightmare Wheel, yeah, everybody knows about that interaction. Uh, yeah, book is, I think, really good card design. It's It can be used offensively. It can be used defensively. Um, it can be used just straight up like, you know, you're going to get attacked for lethal, flip the monster face down, you don't get attacked. Right? 
it goes from very simple uses like that to very complex uses, like turning off a nightmare reel or something. Um, so there's, it's, I mean, there's a reason it's in the top three, but you may be saying, guys, two cards ahead of this extremely versatile card? That's impossible. Well, let's go look at what these two cards are. Number two. All right, number two, we've got Wall of Disruption. The more monsters your opponent has, the better this card becomes. Uh, now we keep going back to this example, but Wall of Disruption is not just preventive, right? Floodgate is preventive. If you get, if you draw Floodgate after your opponent has summoned a boss monster, well, guess what? It's it's a worthless. It might as well be, you know, summon Skull that you can't summon, right? Uh, wall of Disruption is better in that, oh, your opponent summoned a monster this turn and attacked? That doesn't matter. It's a battle trap. It still works. Oh, your opponent summoned their monster last turn, but they're attacking with it now? <laughs> that's fine. It still works. It's a battle trap. So, uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Wall. Yeah, Wall's nice because it uh, deals with a board that... You can't deal with with your preventative cards like your Floodgate, your Mind Crush, your Cursed Seal, whatever your preventative cards may be. Um, this says, oh man, my opponent got their combo off. Well, at least I can still have a card to deal with it. And this is going to be good in just about every matchup. Um, like no matter what they're playing, they're going to summon monsters. They're going to declare attacks. They're going to not want those monsters to lose attack. Um, it's cool because it can not just be used as straight defense, but it can also be used as removal. If you have a monster out and they have a monster out, their monster losing 800 might say, well, their monster's dying. And that's really nice. Uh, in, in Speed Duel, a tempo swing like that can be huge when they're taking a few hundred life points and losing what they were defending their own life points with. That can be a really big swing just off of one card. So yeah, I, I mean, Floodgate Trap Hole, uh, uh, Wall of Disruption, rather. Um, I, I think there's something to note about it is not on the limited list. So if you are using your limited three on something else on this list, like, oh, I want I want books, I want Cyber Dragons, I want um, Crystal Regeki, whatever it is, you can still run Wall of Disruption it's still an option. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't hurt the rest of your deck building. Um, and to your point, the, it's we're playing in a format with a rule set that doesn't have main phase two, right? And that's what makes wall so good, because if I go in with a combo and I attack, and that com and that attack is disrupted, huh? pun intended, by your wall then, oh, I don't have anything to go to to make a second play. I just go to end phase. You know, you get to crack back at that point. That's what makes yep. a card like a good battle trap like Wall really good in speed duels, even better than it would be in, like, say, TCG. So, so. All right, I think we're ready for the best staple in speed duels. Number one. Number one. I think if some of you at home uh, have been making your own list, you're like, oh, I think something's missing from this list. It is, in fact, Zoma the Spirit. It is number one here and number one in our hearts. Uh, <laughs> no, this card is incredibly powerful. Um, it is on the limited one list. It is a lot of people's choice when they say, what limited one card do I want? They're picking this card over Nightmare Wheel a lot of the time, over Jinzo sometimes. Um, this card can single-handedly protect you from a Juragumo, uh, because if they're at full life and they attack with Juragumo into a Zoma, they could go to zero life points. So this card can just wall a Juragumo. This card can wall um, an Azana if they've used a Cosmic Cyclone already. Uh, a, a boosted Azana is at 35, they'll just lose another uh, over 3,000 life points and also be dead. Um, and also you can end phase this card against big attack monsters, ram it into their guy, and they're dead. 
Um, and then it's also just more pressure. If you're talking about, we're both at 4,000, I'm not doing any gimmicks with uh, Zoma. I'm just end phasing a Zoma. And on my turn, I have one more card to attack you with. Um, yeah, so a little bit versatile, but definitely a very powerful card. Yeah, in, in a 4,000 life point format, to do what is a minimum of 1,800 burn damage, like if there's a crash with an 1,800 monster, that's really good because that's that's your floor. Your floor for damage is 1,800, and your ceiling is like whatever your opponent can come up with, right? Double boosted Izana, that's your ceiling, 45. So this this card is <laughs> insane, all right? This... It really is. Yeah, this, this card, I still think, and I said this last year before the first list came out, this card is ban worthy. And honestly, um, I can tell you based off an example of me recently playing Cyber Angels in a tournament, I was playing against Joey Beatdown, and I had that game completely under control. Like, there was nothing else. No single card, no two card combo existed in that deck, in that main deck, that could have done anything to stop my Izana. But there was one card that could, and that was Zoma. And that Zoma literally went from me dominating that game to me just straight up losing it just like that. So a single card that can turn a game around that much has to be number one on the list. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's all there is to it. So yeah, no. It's it's probably one of the only, and some people would argue the only ban-worthy card in Speed Duels. Where even as a one-of, if it can just... If games should not be decided by the fact that, oh, you drew your one-of? Well, I guess you got this one. Maybe I'll draw mine next time. So, um, it, it, it's probably one of the only ban-worthy cards in the game. And uh, that's why you should pick it if you're picking a limited one card. Unless you have a very good reason to pick something else. So, um, you have any final thoughts on Zoma or a top 10 staple list? Uh, no, just it's exactly what you said about Zoma. Um, just highly consider that card when, you, when you're thinking, um, what limited one card should I play? Um, it, it happens to be very good against the meta, which is sort of a silly thing to play say about Zoma because it's good against most metas but it is it is truly good against um the expected meta right now which is like Joey Beatdown and Cyber Angels because they run high attack monsters this card's going to deal a lot of damage yeah. so it's a little more valuable than if everyone was playing something else yeah exactly so Thank you all for watching this top 10 staples list. I hope it helps you uh, when you're getting started on your deck building process or the way our deck building goes when you're trying to finish a deck, right? You don't yeah. know what to what to finish it off with. Hopefully this helps you there more than anything else. So, uh, yep, uh, that is it for this video. We will see you next time. But until then, Terramaster and Drake, we're out. Mm -hmm.